This time I've given you a polynomial that's already in factored form. Okay, so we get a game plan. We're gonna set the polynomial equal to zero. We're gonna factor if possible. We're gonna find the zeros of that polynomial. And this time, instead of testing the intervals, we're gonna graph using multiplicity. Okay, so what do you do? You set it equal to zero. Uh-huh, x minus two squared. Okay, x plus one, sure and x plus 3 squared. What are my zeros? It's the zeros of the factors. Yeah, so I'm gonna have a zero of minus 3, uh-huh, minus 1, okay, and 2. What is the multiplicity of minus 3? This is uh, multiplicity 2. What's the multiplicity of minus 1? It's 1. And what's the multiplicity at 2? It's two. Yes, that means that they have occurred more than one time. Only one time and two times. Okay, wait for it. Minus three is right here. Uh-huh. Minus one is here. Okay. And two is right here. Yeah. So let's look at this polynomial's end behavior. Uh-huh. Two, three, four, five. What did I do? I just looked at the degree of its leading term. When I multiply these guys out, the degree of the leading term and the leading term is going to be the product of the leading term of each one of the factors. Okay, second degree, that makes it third degree, fourth degree, fifth degree. It's a fifth degree polynomial and it's going to be positive. That means it's going to end mixed and it's going to end up. Yes, it is going to end like this. If you want to see a video on end behavior, look up the video on end behavior. Okay. So then it starts down here. Mm -hmm. Let's do this in blue. Now it's going to go to minus 3. What's the multiplicity at minus 3? It's 2. So is it going to bounce across? It's even. It bounces. Oh, bounce. Come on. Minus 1. Does it bounce across? It crosses because it has multiplicity 1. Sure. 2. Does it bounce across at 2? It bounces because it has even multiplicity and it does end like this. Let's do this one one more time, this time using the factor method. Remember our game plan? We got a game plan. First, we're going to set the polynomial equal to 0. Then we're going to factor that polynomial if possible. We're going to find all the zeros of the polynomial. We're going to use those zeros to test intervals. And then we're going to graph. Okay, we're going to list the factors. We're going to find the zeros and we're going to test the intervals. We already have the graph. And let's talk about why this multiplicity trick works. Sure, if we were looking at this man, this would be x minus 2 times x minus 2 times x plus 1 times x plus 3 times x plus 3. Okay, one, two copies of that, one copy of this, and two copies of that. Okay, on a number line, we're going to put our zeros. Here's minus 3, here's minus 1, and over here is 2. Oh, what do we want to do? We want to check these intervals. To the left of minus 3, I have minus 10. Minus 10 makes this positive or negative. Makes this negative. Minus 10 makes this positive or negative. It makes it negative. It makes it negative. It makes it negative. Minus 10 makes this negative. That's one, two, three, four, five negatives. So it's going to be negative over here, indicated by our graph. So that the left of negative 3, our function is below the line. In between minus 3 and minus 1 is that value of minus 2. So then we're going to go through and we're going to take a look at this. Minus 2 makes this negative. Why? Because minus 2 minus another 2 is minus 4. But I'm not actually concerned with the retail value of the function unless, of course, I want to make a more precise graph and then I would. Okay, so then minus 2 makes this negative. It makes this negative. Minus 2 makes this positive. Minus 2 makes this Just kidding. Back that math up. Minus 2 makes this negative. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, minus 2 is, however, going to make this positive and the same with that one. Here we have 1, 2, 3 negative signs, so my function is going to be negative or below the line. And that's why we get that bounce. These are our potential switching and crossing points. Because it was multiplicity even, the plus plus didn't make a net net effect on the value of our polynomial. We had five negatives. Because we had two switched, we only have three negatives. Hence, my function is negative or below the line in between those two. Let's see what happens in here. I need a value in between minus one and two. What's in between minus one and two? Zero, sure. So we'll put zero up here. Zero makes this positive or negative? Negative. Zero makes this positive or negative? Negative. Zero makes this positive or negative? Let's see, zero plus one is one. So that's positive. Zero makes this positive, positive, positive. Okay, two wrongs, in this case, make a right. And that's why we see our graph in between minus one and two is above the line because my function is positive. Okay, and then to the right of two, hmm, three, three, sure, check three, microphone, check, check, check three, um, three makes this positive, positive, three makes this positive, three makes this positive, three makes this positive, and the whole dang thing, positive, for sure, for sure, look, we get a bounce, come on, ba bounce, why, because you're taking an even number of factors and you're switching them, net, net, no effect on the value of your polynomial. Thank you.